Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to show you a perennial that's doing amazingly well in my garden. This is called Midnight Masquerade Penstemon. I've had it here for three, I think going on four years now, and I thought you guys might enjoy seeing what this plant looks like once it's had a chance to establish itself and kind of spread out a little bit and really bloom profusely. And it has bloomed like this every single year since I've put it in. Of course, in the beginning, it wasn't as big. And that's kind of why I want to show you these sorts of things in our garden. We want to do that more, show you what established mature plants look like so that when you see it at the garden center in its little can, you know, sometimes like this, we usually see in a quart or a gallon sized can and they're not very big. Oftentimes we don't see them in full bloom. And so it's hard to picture what it might look like in your garden. Right here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six plants is what I have in this whole area. And it grows, this variety grows about three feet tall and anywhere from two to three feet wide at maturity. There are roughly 250 species of penstemon out there and they're all so wonderful. They vary in a lot of different colors, white, red, blue, purple, pink, um, and lots of different sizes too. There are some really short growing penstemons, some very tall growing. These haven't even matured out to like a three foot size. I'm not sure how tall this one is right here, but it's getting there. And I think we might even reach that at some point, but penstemon do really well in well-drained areas and even in slightly alkaline soil, which is what we have. And that's probably why they're doing so well for us. And I've grown other varieties like Huskers Red, Electric Blue, um, what others? There are several others that I have grown like in my old garden and they've all done really well. The thing I like about this variety, you can see the stem here is very darkly colored, beautiful color in that the leaves are a little bit darker. So they've kind of a purplish red tinge in with the green. So they're very unique. Like you can see them up next to the boxwood and how much extra color, like if you saw them alone, you would say, oh, those leaves are green, but you put them up next to like an emerald green leaf and they really contrast each other beautifully and they bloom for a very long time. So they usually start blooming late spring, early summer, and they'll bloom for, bloom for a good four weeks or more. Um, and then when they're done blooming, you can either cut the plant back by about half and it may encourage them to bloom again, or you can do what I do and you just leave them alone. <laughs> I never, never touch them again after I cut them back in the fall. That's the only time I touch this plant. Um, other than fertilizing in the spring, so twice a year, but the seed heads they leave behind are so gorgeous. I love to use them in cut flower arrangements. Um, they're one of those things that will last and last and last, and they all kind of have this color. So the seed heads, you can almost kind of see what they will look like. They kind of create these little spheres that are burgundy colored. And the other interesting thing about penstemon, the common name is beard tongue, um, which comes from the Greek words penta and stamon, which means five stamens. So they have five stamens inside each petal, four of which are fertile and one of which is not. The one that is not fertile sticks out further than the rest and has like little hairy spines on it that make it look like kind of a bearded tongue coming out of the throat of the flower. It's amazing how intricate each little tiny flower is on each stalk of this plant. And I have an affinity for spiky type blooms. They're very foxglove-esque, um, but they are very drought resistant perennial once they're established. They can handle um, high salt and they attract tons of pollinators because the flowers are very rich in nectar. So hummingbirds are especially attracted to penstemon as are butterflies and honeybees. Now this one is a zone three through eight. Um, so a very winter hardy, like you could even put this sort of thing in a container if you wanted to, like in our, our zone five, six, and this would winter over beautifully. And the last thing, if you could hear any beeping or construction noises, it's because we have a house being built right behind our vegetable garden right now. Um, so we have a lot of construction noises going on, uh, but I just wanted to show this to you. It's a beautiful day out here. These are looking gorgeous. They're just such an amazing, low maintenance, easy care perennial that I think fit in really well in a sunny position. I don't think I mentioned that in your garden. The sunnier it is, the more deeply colored their leaves will be, but it can handle part sun as well. This one gets shade, shade in the morning, afternoon sun, uh, and they do really well. So anyway, thought you guys might enjoy seeing what this looks like. I think they're awesome. Hope you guys are having a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.